Hey guys, welcome back. It's Josh with the Financial Advisor Car Guy. I want to start by just telling you guys, there's literally nothing more important to me in my professional life than seeing people reach their financial goals. So this week I want to share a story about one client in particular who had a pretty lofty goal, uh, but was able to act on it this week. And so before we get into that story specifically, I'll just start by saying, you know, goals range from you know, sending my kid to school, to um, buying that vacation property, to going on a cruise, it doesn't matter. It could just be I wanna retire with X amount of dollars in the bank. People's goals vary from person to person. Well, this particular client came to me uh, quite a while ago now and had a lofty goal of um, buying a new supercar. And uh, this guy's no stranger to high performance vehicles. He's had a McLaren 650. He's had several Porsches, three, you know, GT3 RSs. Um, actually still has two of them. Um, <laughs> but he and his wife have been wanting to get a McLaren 765 LT Spider. And these cars sell anywhere from, you know, we'll call it 450 on the low end to $800,000, maybe even a million. I mean, that'd be a super specced out one. I've never seen one that high, but they've been holding value and actually climbing a little bit. So saying that a car that maybe is 800,000 today is, uh, you know, maybe destined to, to continue to climb. And I'm not gonna fool you. I don't pretend to know a lot about the McLaren market. Um, I know that there were 765 of this particular car built and I don't know how many of them are spiders. So what a spider is, is essentially a hardtop convertible. And the hardtop comes off. Uh, it, some of them have uh, roof scoops, kind of like a McLaren Senna or a P1. Um, you know, this is kind of, for a lack of a better term, like the poor man Senna. Uh, a McLaren Senna is a $1.5 million vehicle or more in some cases. And um, the predecessor to that was the P1, which is north of $2 million today. So these cars over time, these special cars over time have, have held value and in fact appreciated. And McLaren somewhat recently did announce that they're no longer gonna make naturally aspirated cars. They're not, I mean, we're not talking turbocharged, supercharged, none of that. It's gonna be hybrid moving forward and hybrid electric. So it's going to have, you know, some sort of maybe twin turbo V6 with an assist that's powered with electricity or something like that. We don't know. But the point is um, the raw power of a naturally aspirated engine is going away in a McLaren. And this 765 LT is truly the, the pinnacle of their lineup currently outside of those cars that are just astronomically expensive. Again, the Senna and the P1. So... Let's fast forward. This client has worked really, really hard, um, saved a lot of money, done great things. They've got a sizable investment account that has kicked butt this last several months. And on Saturday morning, he texts me and says, Josh, we found the car. Cool. I mean, I'm excited for them. I mean, I, I really, really am. But at the same time, it's like, man, you guys, this is a half a million dollar car. Is that what we're gonna do? So, you know, they kind of divulge and they tell me a little bit more about the fact that they've been looking for a while. They're not necessarily wanting to just buy to buy, but if the right deal came along and they feel like this might be it. So they want to explore and investigate. So the asking price is 509,999. So like $510,000. I mean, that's not an insignificant amount of money. Um, I have clients buy and sell houses that cost $500,000, or I have, you know, <laughs> that, that's probably the most common. <clears throat> but to have a client call and say, hey, I needed to take half a million dollars out of my portfolio to buy a car, I mean, that's a first. <laughs> that's a first. So, uh, but of course, I'm instantly excited. And so he's texting me pictures and telling me all about it. And this is what we're gonna do to it. And this is what it needs and whatever. Well, it really doesn't need anything. Um, what they found out was uh, part of their appeal was they thought this had, had a carbon fiber hood, uh, which is a super rare option. Now, as it turns out, after they talked to the sales guy, it's not a carbon fiber hood. 
um, it's a painted factory hood, which may be carbon, but it's painted. Um, and then somebody wrapped it with carbon. So, you know, from a few feet away, uh, it looks like a carbon fiber wrap, but it's not real. And so that's easily remedied. They can go find a carbon fiber hood. The car uses the same hood as two or three other McLarens, including a Senna. So if they really wanted to like change the look of the front end, they could get a Senna hood for what it's worth, right? But that's not the point. They, they thought this was a carbon hood. It has all these options. Um, it's got this like monochromatic, or I don't even know what the word is, but the roof. And uh, literally at the press of a button, it self and light, or it, it darkens and lightens on its own by itself, right? They literally just push a button to go darker and a button to go lighter. And I don't know how that works. I don't know the science behind it, but that's incredibly cool. I mean, to literally be able to change the level of tint by a button. Um, so you can push it and it'll black itself out. You can push it, it'll go all the way clear and anywhere in between. So that's a huge expensive option, but they wanted it. Um, I kind of talked about like the roof scoop and there's other, there's other options for these cars. But again, there's only 765 and there's no two that were built exactly the same. So some have full Alcantara interior, others have leather, others had both. Um, you know, from, let's see, like carbon ceramic brakes, uh, I don't know, some striping, pinstriping, ex uh, accent colors and things like that. Now this car, I'm gonna, I mean, you probably saw a, a picture when you clicked on the video, but I'm gonna post it again here. And and basically this thing is like a, a Nardo gray, which is an Audi color. It's It's kind of similar to the Nardo gray which right now is a super trendy color. It's got orange highlights, which are absolutely stunning. It's got scissor doors. It's got all the things that make this sucker a supercar, an exotic hypercar. And it's got a price tag of half a million dollars. So I ask him, are, are you gonna pay full price or, or what are your thoughts? And he goes, you know what? This thing is priced pretty well. They haven't had it in stock. I don't know if they're gonna wiggle on the room at all but we're gonna offer him 490. It's a great, if you can do that, cool. So he calls and you know we're in the Northwest and this car is in the Northeast, it's in Brooklyn, it's on Staten Island in fact. And so they call and they've only had the car like three or four days, brand new to the dealership, they're not ready to lower the price at all and there's been some interest. I don't know how much interest, but as a sales guy, right, they're gonna say, oh yeah, we've been getting phone calls like crazy. That's what salespeople do, right? They're trying to sell a car and they want to create urgency so that you write that check. So the long and short of it is, the guy says, yeah, no, we can't budge on the price. It's 509-999. Um, but what we can do for you is throw in free shipping. We know you're in the Northwest. You know, that's like a $2,500 or $3,000 value. Um, we'll put it in an enclosed trailer and ship it from our door to yours so you don't have to worry about it. What do you say? So my client says, well, let's, we're going to talk about it. We'll call you back. So he and his wife have a nice long conversation. Um, they actually go back and forth with the dealer for a couple of days. As it turns out, the car has 4,900 miles on it. So it's like a brand new car. But for this particular car, a 765 LT Spider. That's actually kind of a lot of miles. There are tons of them out there that have sub 100 or 1,000 and then sub 2,000 miles. And if you can find a nice clean example with less than 1,000 miles, you're like 750 grand. So what's shocking to me is the depreciation from there to where they're at today. Now the car has less than 5,000 miles, but it's at 509 and it's a heavily optioned car. It's exactly what they're looking for. So what he tells me, and this is because he had a McLaren, again, they had a 650 once before. He says, you know, we know that these McLarens have very expensive, you know, oil changes and services and all that stuff. And we don't have a McLaren dealer in the state of Oregon. The car would either have to go down to San Francisco or up to Bellevue, Washington. So he tells this to the sales guy and says, hey, listen, you know, we know that the car is probably gonna be due for a service shortly can you please read me the dash and it'll tell you to the day how many days are left till the next service? Sure, the guy says. So he goes and sits in the car, turns it on, 39 days till the next service. So my client says, well, how about this? 
you're throwing in shipping, why don't you throw in the service? We'll give you a full asking price. They go back and forth a little bit, but ultimately they agree on it. And so that's what it is. It's gonna yeah, be $509,000. So what's crazy to me though, is my client's sitting in my office earlier this week and we're talking about it and and he goes, yeah, for that, for that um, 650, when we got an oil change and you know they they change some hoses and they change some other fluids and they do a pretty thorough inspection and stuff he goes it's like $4500 and that's on a lower end car so on these higher end the 765 um you know this exact same service is probably more like 8 9 10000 and by the time you factor in shipping um, because we're in Oregon, there's no sales tax, you know, stuff like that. He felt like he was stealing this car. And so he was glad to pay the full price once they guaranteed that the service would be done and the shipping was included. So here he is, he and his wife are getting their dream car. This is a car that they plan to drive, uh, which is why they were okay saving money on the purchase price to get a car with a little bit more miles than what else is on the market. They didn't need to buy a car with 1,000 or 2,000 miles because they're going to add more, but they're not gonna be crazy with it. They're not going to drive it to 100,000 miles, right? He says it's a car they're gonna keep forever, and they're pretty serious about their race cars. They, they have two GT3 RSs that they drive on the track. They have had other Porsches. Like I said, the 650, they track these cars. They drive them on racetracks. And so this 765 is not going to be any different. It will be driven and it will be driven hard and it will be driven on a track. But what he told me is, you know, they're, they're a little bit afraid, right? When you spend half a million dollars, there's an immediate, we'll call it buyer's remorse, right? They immediately think, gosh, am I doing the right thing? This is so much money, so much money. Now that fear and concern and all that will fade the moment the car's in their driveway and they're driving it and enjoying it. But in the meantime, while it's in transit, they're concerned and that's natural. They're also concerned that if they're driving a half million dollar car around town and some idiot doesn't pay attention and hits them, it's a very expensive car to fix and it's gotta be done correctly and properly and you know you probably need McLaren to fix it. So. There's, there's concerns, right? So they're not gonna drive this car quite the same way as they drive their GT3s. But they will trailer it, they will keep it in a garage, maybe up on a lift. I don't know what they're gonna do, how they're gonna store it, but I know they have a beautiful enclosed fifth wheel trailer with the toy hauler and all the things. And that's how they transport their cars currently. But you know they're probably going to um, keep one of their GT3s. This is kind of what he was telling me. They're gonna likely keep one of their GT3 RSs, sell the other one, that's gonna offset a little bit of the price, but then they'll probably go buy a C8 Z06, um, and that'll be their dedicated track car. I mean, there's probably not a car out there that you can get that kind of perform performance for that dollar. Um, I mean, I'm not a Chevy guy, I, I think the Z06, is, or I think the C8s look nice and all, but I don't know, I went to a car show. I mean, you guys probably watched the video a couple weeks ago, I went to a car show and there was tons of C8s. Um, only one Z06, but tons of C8s. They're just not rare. They're quite actually everywhere. And um, it's very common. I see a couple of them on my commute literally every day and I'm in my car for five minutes. So they're not a unique car. They're not a rare car. Uh, they do look somewhat exotic and they're still new enough that they are eye-catching, but from their perspective, it's a heck of a car to drive on a track. So that's their plan. They're still gonna drive the new McLaren on the track, but not to the extent that they can the Corvette. The other thing is, is he was telling me that, you know, a brake job on a GT3 RS, if you're gonna do all four corners, is like 30 grand. It's also, they're not running cheap tires, right? These are track tires and they burn through them. He told me he did the math and I, I guess it must've been last year because he said a full year they spend literally about $500 an hour to race these cars. And that's between services, maintenance, tires, um, whatever else, fuel, obviously, you know, but those kind of things. So it's a super expensive hobby. I mean, if you go out and drive on the track for two hours, you've just dropped a grand. 
And I don't know how many times you have to do that before you need new brakes and new tires and an oil change or a major oil or engine service. And, you know, I mean, it's one of those deals. And so he was telling me after, what did he say? 400 or 500 hours on the track, that GT3 RS actually needs a full engine rebuild. So they're driving these cars as they were designed to be driven, which is awesome. But with that comes the price, you know, and, and so they want something cheaper, but not lacking performance. And so that Z06 is kind of a nice supplementary vehicle. They're still going to have this beautiful McLaren in their garage. And that's going to be their, you know, their kind of trailer queen until it gets to the track. They'll rip it around and then put it back in the trailer, whatever. And uh, so anyway, talking about helping people achieve their dreams. Again, there's nothing more satisfying to me in my career. I definitely, definitely, definitely think that that's the highlight of my day. When a client calls and says, Josh, I'm retiring, you know, I can tell them, great, you can retire with confidence. Or maybe it's the other way around. I'll say, hey, Joe, you've done such a good job. We've done such a good job preparing you for this moment. You are able to go to work tomorrow and re retire, right? Or, hey, Steve, you've been really saving up for this down payment on a home. Or you want to pay cash for something big, right? Like you want to buy a boat or you want to whatever. We've achieved it. Really, those are the days that I love the most. Those are the days that, you know, I, I get the most satisfaction out of what I do. It's always fun to look at the stock market. And when the market's climbing, you know, I've got clients' monies that change hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, literally, which is, you know, mind boggling. But at the same time, not everybody's that crazy rich. And so there's others that, you know, they have modest money, but they have grand ambition. And so again, there's nothing more satisfactory in, in my life than um, in my professional life than telling a client they've achieved that goal. So that's all I got for you guys this week. I thought that was an amazing story. Um, thanks for watching. Like always, like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know if this is something that's inspiring to you. Is this something that you hope to achieve someday? Maybe it's not a McLaren, but maybe you'd like to set a financial goal and, and really do your best to achieve it. So let me know if I can help more so than that. We'll see you next time. May every investment you make be a good one. Till next time.